Hey, seventh grade. Uh, this is the beginning of your seventh grade STEAM class with me. Um, not to be confused with your other seventh grade STEAM class, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, this uh, seventh grade STEAM class is devoted 100% to uh, Lego Mindstorm Robotics. So um, if you're taking the digital version of this course, there obviously are some things that will happen differently for you uh, than for those uh, who are taking this course in person. Uh, if you're taking this course in person, uh, you'll, you'll be working with a uh, Lego Mindstorm Robotics kit, building a robot, changing that robot, adapting that robot, customizing that robot, rebuilding that robot, that kind of thing, in addition to uh, doing a lot of meaningful and rich uh, programming activities uh, as well. Uh, those of you that are taking this course strictly digitally, uh, you will be doing uh, regular uh, coding activities uh, each week. You will have a coding activity, a specific, uh, a, a specific accomplishment to make, a, some, a specific task to accomplish within uh, the LEGO Mindstorm Robotics coding uh, system, the, the, the program. Uh, once you code that, you'll take a screenshot of that code. You'll submit that screenshot to the exit ticket, and uh, that will be the, uh, the assignment for, uh, for the day. So um, that's the basics of this course. Um, we'll take today and get the software installed, and we'll take a little tour of the software, that kind of thing, uh, and then subsequent classes. Uh, the next class you have, you'll have your, your first challenge, uh, and then we'll build on that challenge as we continue through uh, the course. So uh, today we're going to, again, get started with uh, LEGO Mindstorm uh, Robotics, and uh, there's a couple things to do today. Uh, the first step, the very first step, is right here, and that is we need to make sure that we install the app on our Chromebook. Right, so uh, this giant picture right here, if you click on it, it is a link. And if you click on that link, that will bring you here to the Chrome store, or it should eventually, maybe someday, bring you to uh, the Chrome store, right? So here is um, the Lego Mindstorm uh, Chrome uh, program. And this is not an extension, it's actually an app, right? So what we need to do is uh, click on the blue button, right? That's a pretty standard uh, thing. Click on the blue button. That's going to launch the app. And this will take quite some time to install. This, this is a huge uh, program. It is a powerful program, and it does take some time uh, to install. So you can see there's a progress bar. Uh, you're going to have to wait and watch uh, and uh, be patient because it takes some time. So I paused uh, as that, that app launched, and you can see the progress bar has gone about halfway, goes halfway pretty much all of this at, at once, and then it pauses again. So I'm going to go back to pausing, and we'll continue to wait for the Mindstorms program to open. Okay, so LEGO Mindstorms finally finished open. I'm going to click on that program, and you can see now this is what that program looks like, or at least what the outside looks like. So this is a lobby. And you can see start here, let's prepare. There's actually tutorials here that will lead you through uh, this software and get you a lot of information about it. Uh, these tutorials also involve you building uh, with the uh, Mindstorms Robotics Kit. So some of that you won't be able to do if you are fully virtual. Um, however, uh, a lot of it you will, right? So uh, we're going to start and, and we'll kind of go our own path. Uh, you're more than welcome to check out that uh, the tutorial. But we'll kind of go our own path and walk a little bit through each of the different kinds of programming blocks that we that we have and that we'll use in this program. So I'm going to just click down here where it says new program. And that new program button should open up a new programming window just like this. And this is the, the play button, right, or the start. And this is the start of your program. If you think about Scratch and the Scratch program you've done, this would be like the green flag button, right? Click the green flag. When, 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 green, flag, when green flag is clicked, that button. Um, so I'm going to start and we're going to work through all of the uh, coding blocks in this uh, green, uh, all the green bar blocks. And then we'll, we'll talk about the, the uh, or, uh, excuse me, the yellow blocks as well. And I'm going to start at the right and move to the left because uh, in a lot of ways, uh, that makes some sense to me. So this first block is called the brick status light block. And if you click that in, you can see where it's blinking uh, blue there. It's basically telling you, check this out, right? So if you click here, uh, you can see there are different ways we can make this brick status light appear. We can make it off. We can make it on. 
and we can reset it. Not really even sure what reset would do in terms of uh, how does that work. But uh, right now it's set to on. Uh, you can then click down here where it says the color and you can choose from green, orange, or red. Red's my favorite color, so I'm going there. And then this next thing is whether or not it's pulsing, right? So right now pulse is set to true, right? If we want it not to blink, if we want that light to blink, leave pulse true. If we don't want the light to blink, then uh, we'd select false and it would be either steady on or steady off. I'm going to leave it blinking because blinking lights are fun. The next thing, again, next brick as we continue to move to the left is the uh, sound brick, right? The audio brick. And if you click there, and again, we can click here and it gives us all different kinds of things to do. We can stop, we can play a file, we can play a tone, a note, or we can actually record a sound. Now, uh, just a little bit of information. If you record a sound, I won't necessarily, like if you record a sound and you play it on the robot yourself, good. Uh, but if you record a sound and then you try and take a screenshot of that and send it to me, it's not going to transfer. I'm not going to be able to play it on the robot for you. So uh, that's just information you need to know. Uh, what we're going to do is we'll stick with play a file because that's kind of simplest. And if you want to play a file right here where it says Mindstorms is the name of the file it's going to play. So if I click on that, you can see there's all different kinds of sounds I can select, right? I like the animal sounds. They make me giggle, right? Specifically, my favorite is the elephant call. So I'm going to select that. And if you can hear me at all, you can hear that elephant call sound was just made. It's a good time. So elephant call is one of my favorites, but uh, feel free to check them out. Look at them. Uh, there's a lot of interesting sounds. A lot of students have used some really interesting sounds in, in interesting and meaningful ways uh, as they program. So uh, again, encourage you to use the audio. One thing that I will say about audio is when we start programming robots that are moving, uh, instead of leaving the, the audio sound on uh, zero, right? On this setting, zero, wait for completion. I would encourage you to to, to leave it on uh, one, play once, because that way it's not going to play the sound and then move, it's going to play the sound and continue moving, right? So the motion and the sound won't be independent events, meaning sound, mo motion, stop, sound, stop, motion, uh, but rather it'll go motion and the sound will play and then motion will continue. So it's a little bit smoother transition. Uh, this is the volume, how loud that sound will play on the robot. Just leave it at 100 unless you want it nice and quiet. Uh, the next uh, programming block over, again to the left, is the uh, display, uh, this display setting. And again, we drag that in, immediately click on this, and you can see different things we can do. We can make it show text, we can make it show an image, shapes, we can reset the screen, all those wonderful things. These uh, make it so that you, how you can affect that screen a little bit. And then over here is obviously images that we can select, right? So again, we left it on image, and if we want to select an image, click in that bar and then we can get all kinds of different googly eyes, right? We can get uh, um, different expressions. Isn't this fun? Uh, my favorite though is in the progress uh, meter and it is this one, water level four, I think it is, or water level three, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. It makes me smile because it's got fishy in it. Well, water level three, I guess it's called, so there's fish. What are you gonna do? All right. So as we move across, so far, all we've really done is affect the way the robot appears at some levels or, or the way it sounds, uh, but we haven't really made the robot move at all. And that's going to be one of the things that we want to do a lot of is making our robot move. So the first thing I'm going to do is drag this next block, which is a move tank. That's what's called a move tank. I drag that in. And these, are, uh, these first two are speed settings or power settings, how fast you want the motors to go around. Just leaving them at 50 makes a lot of sense. Uh, this next one over is the number of rotations. But first, let's click on uh, the object, and we can see right now our robot is on for rotations, or, uh, or the, the, the tank wheels are on for rotations, meaning uh, the, the program is going to count how many times those wheels go around. And that's going to be meaningful if you want to travel a specific distance, right? You'll be able to control distance really well if you go uh, a number of rotations. If you go on for seconds, that would be great if time mattered, uh, but if distance matters more, and you'll see in our first few challenge at least, uh, distance will matter much more, uh, then on for rotations makes more sense than on for, on for seconds. On for degrees is like 
very small rotations, right? So if you wanted to travel incredibly precisely on for degrees would make sense. Uh, but if you've got to travel a distance on for rotations makes more sense. And we'll look at on also as a setting and on, it means your, your motor is just on until something else in your program happens uh, that may interrupt that, that motion or may go along with that motion. So uh, on is another setting that we'll use. Uh, but right now, uh, we're going to leave our move tank in on for rotations and we'll leave the number of rotations as one. You see this touchpad here. We could make it five. We can make it whatever we want. I said I'd leave it one and now I've changed it to five. So what do we know? The next block over in our programming uh, window is what's called move steering. So if I click on this one and drag them up, it's a move steering. And as it's set up right now, again, if we click on it, you see it's on for rotations. Again, we can turn it on. We can turn it on for degrees or on for seconds. But on for rotations makes most sense in uh, it, with the move steering, at least in my, in my mind for the time being. Um, what I want you to notice right now is if we, as you drag in that move steering block, all it would do, if we don't change anything at all, this move steering block will not turn at all. It won't steer at all. All it will do is make your robot travel one rotation forward, straight forward. And the reason is right here is the steering block, right? And you can drag this one way or another and make uh, your turns either positive or negative turns and, and try and get exactly what you want. But you can also click up here at the little slider and then get that number pad up and then type exactly. I want to go 90 degrees, right? Let me get this out of the way. I'm going to just type 90, right? I want to go negative 90 degrees. Uh, type negative 90, right? And you can see those two. Oh, that didn't work at all. Let's try that once more. Negative 90 degrees. There you go. Okay, let's try one more time. Nine, zero. So negative 90 degrees. And you, can, you can see the arrow looks like it's turning all the way around, but really what it's doing is turning that 90 degrees. And we'll see that our robot turns about 90 degrees when we set it to turn 90 degrees. You may need to make some adjustments um, depending on how your robot is performing as you uh, use these programming blocks. Again, as we continue across the next, uh, the next uh, programming block in our window is what's called a large motor, right? And I'm going to bring it in and just drag it right there in my program. You're like, well, it's, it's weird. It looks weird. And it does. But here's what I want to show you is the wire. So if I click here and, and select the wire from here, you can see they got a blinking light here, and then I've got a blinking light here too. So if I click down here, you can see that it create a wire from there to there, and then I can continue programming. So this is a way we can make our program larger or make it so that it fits in a screen uh, as we continue to uh, program more and more blocks. The move, uh, the move, excuse me, the large motor block is used to control a large motor. Uh, what's really important with this isn't, uh, well, I mean, could be on for rotations, on for degrees, all that stuff, uh, but specifically is the port that you are connected to. So it's really important to know what port your motor is plugged into if you're going to be using a large motor, uh, a large motor block. That's going to be a big deal. Uh, and that brings us to the last block, which is our medium motor block. And the medium motor block, again, it's important to know which port you're plugged into. So it's important to know uh, how many rotations or whatever. Uh, in this block, we, we probably will use at some point or another on for seconds as a setting. Uh, and, and that's because if we go on for rotations and it's stopped from rotating completely, that can just shut our program down completely. But if we're on for seconds and it rotates a little bit but gets stopped a little bit, it can continue to uh, run the rest of the program because it's gone that number of seconds on and then it moves on with the program. So uh, we'll talk more about that as we get to deeper, deeper, different kinds of programs uh, that we work on. All right, so this is all the basic kind of uh, basic coding blocks, right? Uh, these are all the kinds of functions that your uh, Lego Mindstorm robot can do. But there are a couple others that are pretty important and they're in the, in the gold bar. So uh, one of them specifically, I'm gonna start and just go randomly here is, is this one. And this is a loop block, right? So you guys in scratch coding, think of your um, repeat forever loops, right? So this is a forever loop. Uh, but we can also set it up uh, if you click uh, here you can see we can set it up to work on the color sensor or the gyro sensor the infrared sensor or the touch sensor we can we can set it up to 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 change when uh, the brick buttons are are manipulated right so we'll talk more about that as we continue programming but for now just know uh, that this loop 
is a, a programming block you could use to make something happen over and over and over again. And again, that's what a loop would do. Uh, the next one in the line from, uh, from this time left to right is what Lego calls a switch. And what I would call, uh, what, what I would call, and think more correctly call a um, if then else block, right? An if then else uh, coding block. So if you think about coding, uh, basically it's saying, if this happens, do this. But if it doesn't, if that doesn't happen, then do something else. And that's an if then else. So right now it's set up on the touch sensor. So if the touch sensor is pressed, then whatever we put in here would happen, right? But then there's also an X line here and we can choose, well, if the touch sensor isn't depressed, what is it we're going to do? So you've got two different uh, coding lines here that you can use uh, if that thing is true and if that thing is not true. Um, we'll use, uh, we, we will use a, a switch on the touch sensor, on the infrared sensor, and on the color sensor, certainly, but you can also set your uh, switches up on some other things. The only other block that, that's here that we would even talk about is this weight block, and weight block does exactly what you think it does. It makes the program weight, right? Uh, so there's some reasons that you would use a weight block, but there's also a lot of reasons that you wouldn't need to use a, a weight block, and specifically with the programs that we'll look at um, uh, this, this year, this quarter, um, we probably won't need that weight block much. I would caution you against uh, bringing in a second uh, start block. I would caution you against running parallel code unless there's a really specific re reason for you need to need to do that. Uh, I would say in the programs we're going to write, you probably shouldn't need to run parallel code. So you should be able to do everything from one start block and, uh, and manage from there. So that's an overview of Lego Mindstorm uh, robotics programming, uh, the programming language that we'll use uh, this year. Uh, again, I encourage you to take a look, dive in, get to know some of those uh, programs and features. Uh, if you've got this program installed and you've opened it up, uh, that's really all we're going to work on today uh, for class. So uh, check it out, get to know it, and uh, get ready to start programming.